Good afternoon, Mary Ascension with the Ascension News. I am with the amazing Cicada, Rachel, Rachel Cicada, Macias. Say hi to Cicada. <laughs> hi. <laughs> We're going to get started in a second, but I would like to have an opening prayer just to get everybody centered and give it a few minutes for everybody to come on board because we're going to have some amazing questions and a demo of Reiki. So here we go. Close your eyes. Take one deep breath. Visualize what you want for your intention. Devote this time being together with the divine light and love. We give thanks to the supreme creator of all that is, the gift of love that flows to to every aspect of our being. As we share this time together with all souls that are coming together on this live stream today, we claim health, love, healing, happiness, and freedom during this session. We give thanks for infinite intelligence. So be it. So it is. So it will be. I am that ascension in the light. I am that. Truth is my name. Thanks for joining. So, Without further ado, I got some questions for Cicada. All, All right, right, Cicada. <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, tell us a little bit about your background, Cicada. So, Because I don't know if everybody really knows all the amazing techniques and modalities that you have. So let us know. Okay. Well, let's see. I'll, I'll try to think back to the beginning. Um Back in the beginning, I will say I, I used to um, practice yoga religiously. Um, I think that's probably when I met you in yeah. that same type, time period. And actually, my very one of the very first things I did was um, doing the, the retrobiotics with you at your, your studio in Pasadena. So there was that. Um, and that's when I was kind of on my journey um, um, of wellness and nutrition um, so ultimately, I did get my master's degree in holistic nutrition. Um, also, we spent time, <laughs> we did this one too, together with um, learning about raw foods and actually became a, a raw food dessert chef. Um, I taught classes to children, um, catered, we catered events together, worked um, for the restaurant. Um, and then moving along um became a, a practitioner of a learned a technique of dna activation um also learned um i have to look at my note because i always forget the exact uh, it's neurohypnotic programming so i have an associate uh associate practitioner of neurohypnotic programming um also have learned emotion code work i work with um biomagnetics and um and the reiki so i think that's oh and currently i'm actually finishing up my program as a vegan nutritionist so um i will be offering a program in the near future probably beginning of 2021 um to assist people who want to either transition to full veganism or just want to move to a more um, plant-based diet so. Going back a little bit, you, you reminded me, Cicada and I are, have been besties for 20, what years? 23, almost 24 years, yeah. Oh my God, oh my God. We did so many things. We we actually had co-owners of a restaurant, I forgot that, of a vegan restaurant. We did a lot of raw food chef uh, events. Mm -hmm. I mean, crazy events. Right. <laughs> you actually <laughs> turned me on to the magnets. Uh, we're going to mm -hmm. talk about that in a second. And we did so many sweat lodges together. I oh, mean, God. we've done it. We did the DNA activation together. I mean, yes. a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Right. Uh, okay. So let's go into, uh, let's do the, let's talk about the magnets first. Uh, okay. Tell us about, because you do that at the studio, and right mm -hmm. now with COVID, we're only able to do it outside, right? Right. Obviously. Uh, so, <laughs> technically, <laughs> budgetly, <laughs> no, we, we're <laughs> doing outside. <laughs> yeah, outside in the garden. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, do you have a magnet that you can show us? I do. I brought my one of my favorites. This is the um, the Duo Mag. It used to be called Mag Boy, but they call it a Duo Mag now. Um, this is by Negan, and um, this I use for uh, the rolling rolling on the body. So you can literally roll it almost anywhere that you need um, relief. So I do a full body, uh, what it, we call a rollout, um, using this magnet. Uh, I also use small disc magnets. Um, the person is laying on a magnet, magnetic pad. And, um, and then I have a larger uh, rolling magnet that I use also. So that's really wonderful for um, circulation, for uh, reducing inflammation. Um, it's super relaxing, but it's also um, therapeutic. And um, it's also very important energy because magnets are um, earth energy. And just because our lives are the way they are, we don't tend to get out and connect with nature enough. And so this helps to replenish that very grounding um, earth energy. Just backtracking a little bit to let everybody mm -hmm. Um, when I was down for the count with a broken leg, broken arm, herniated disc, Cicada came over humbly. She actually helped type some emails for me because I couldn't <laughs> <laughs> fed me soup and did Reiki and magnet therapy on me. And I really feel it was real key in my connecting energetically. So I'm so grateful to that, Cicada. You're so generous. You're so generous. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, okay, this, I have a hard time pronouncing this, so you're going to have to correct me on this. Uh, mm -hmm. The name of the Reiki is Usia? It's Usui. Usui. Okay, tell Usui. us. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, I am a Usui Reiki master. Um, Mikao Usui was the founder of, of Reiki, and so... Um, my my teaching is in direct lineage to Mikao Usui. And um, so, like I said, he was the original. Um, there is also another form that was um, created in within the U.S. Uh, Mikao Usui is from Japan, but um, that was one of his students. But his his method is very pure. It's um, very direct and um, I, I really like that. It's it's simple but powerful. So um, the word uh, Reiki itself actually is a Japanese word. Um, and if you break it down into two segments, Rei means spiritual and Ki means energy. So it literally describes what the method um, is using. So you're using spiritual or um some people connect more easily with the idea of uh, universal energy. So the practitioner is basically um, a channel of that energy to the, to the person that's receiving it. Wow. And so um, what, did you say that the uh, Reiki key, the key is mm -hmm. Huan Yin? Or did I? Um, make no. Key, what... Um, what you and I had discussed before is the word key. <laughs> the word key is basically it's the same thing as the word chi. So oftentimes, oh. like we are more here in in the Western world, we might be more familiar with the use of the word chi, which oh. is energy, the flow of energy. So chi is a uh, Chinese word, and key would be the Japanese equivalent. Oh, I guess I for some reason I heard Kuan Yin in there. I'm making yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody was channeling Kwan Yin. <laughs> okay. Okay. The gate and I always laugh. We would stay up hours and hours. Sometimes she'd spend the night for a couple of days. She couldn't go home because we were having so much. <laughs> she lived down the block, but <laughs> so oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have to believe in Reiki in order for it to work? No, and that's the beauty of it because like I was saying it's you're channeling energy energy exists 
energy is the energy flows around us and through us and we are energy and so um there's really nothing to believe in because it just is and um you know people who have been doubtful about it um or people who are doubtful about it um you can kind of be a little more convinced by the fact that um, babies receive Reiki that know nothing about Reiki. Um, like I was telling you before, I have a client who was in co a coma and um, that client did not know that they were receiving Reiki, but yeah, it was effective. So, um, so a belief isn't a requirement. I feel like, um, if there is resistance to it, that can um, impede the effectiveness of it. But if there is no resistance to it, then, you know, the energy flows and it's effective. That reminds me of the our last event we had before COVID, that little baby, Eloise, you, oh, when you were doing Reiki on her. She kept looking up. I mean, we kept, mm -hmm. we kept looking like, who is she looking at? But she was, right. I believe she was feeling and seeing the energy. Exactly. So powerful. Exactly. Her mom asked me when you were coming back to the studio. Oh, and also oh. someone called me today wanting some Reiki and Magnet. I'll give, you, I'll give you the number after. Excellent. Uh, we're, we're, we're catching up online because that's what we have to yeah. do. Okay, uh, is there any medicine involved for Reiki? No, and and again, that's amazing because um, you don't have to worry about um, side effects um, or any um, adverse reactions because it is it is energy. So you're just working with what already exists in the body. Um, what I like to think of it as is um, and um, Mikao Usui also in going back to the idea of spirit, um, that we are made of spirit and spirit is, is perfect. And so when we receive Reiki, when we send Reiki, we work from the idea of, um, perfection existing. And, um, so we're not, we're not manipulating. We're just kind of helping to remind the body of what is already there, which is wholeness and health and wellness and perfect spirit. So, um, so there can be no, there are no side effects and there's no medicine necessary with that in mind. Okay. Going back to the side effects just for a minute, because mm -hmm. I know that sometimes a person could have a healing crisis, which isn't necessarily a side effect, Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, well, <clears throat> when someone is with me, um, you know, if I'm working either face to face or um, doing a distance <clears throat> healing where we've actually had contact, um, one thing I will remind them is to stay hydrated because um, you it just it helps the body flush um, any any stagnation that may have been there. Um, Sometimes people will feel tired. Mm, yeah. um, so I always stress that people honor and pay attention to how they're feeling. So um, if they're feeling tired, making sure that they get rest. Um, sometimes people feel super energized. So I say, yay, you know, go with that. So, um, yeah. That sounds right. good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, a couple of things. Um, a couple of more questions and then we're going to do a demo. Um, how do you, uh, how do you bring balance to someone that's affected right now with anxiety? Cause a lot of people are real anxious right now. So how would you bring balance to that? Um, so what do you mean? If I were, were performing Reiki or yeah. mm -hmm. in another way? Yeah, no, no, whatever. Um, well, I think, just Reiki aside, but Reiki does involve a lot of breathing. Um, I think paying attention to breath is super key. Um, 
just I'll just use a personal example of myself when um, the fires were raging over here um, and I'm up in the foothills and I was about I'm about five miles away from where the um, the closest point of the Bobcat fire was and so the air was thick I couldn't see <laughs> literally down the street or up the street and I noticed that I wasn't breathing regularly um so it's just something that we do when we're uh, when we're tense when we're you know when we're anxious when we're stressed um if we're in fear sometimes if we're angry just uh, we're not breathing properly so that's one of the simplest ways to um kind of help to reduce that stress is to pay attention stop what you're doing and mm -hmm. breathe and there's all kinds of breathing techniques out there um one technique i really enjoy that just kind of helps me um snap out of it and actually i found out that the the navy seals are using this breath breathing technique and um firefighters and um, police academies are teaching this technique because it really helps um really it really will help you um move from high stress states and, and help prevent you going into trauma modes. So it's called box breathing. And um, if you like, I can yeah, do, let's do it. Quick, let's do quick it. thing. Um, basically, it's it's um, <clears throat> you're breathing in sets of four. So it creates a box. So you inhale to the count of four. So one, two, three, four, hold two three four i can't breathe and count at the same time exhale two three four hold two three four and then you repeat that pattern and don't get frustrated if like you start to breathe <laughs> regularly um it takes a second to kind of adjust to the pattern but if you just do that until you feel yourself come to calm, then you can stop and then just breathe in a regular pattern. So does that make sense? Yes. I, uh, okay. we, we learned that in Kundalini breathing. Um, I, I'm glad we did that. I, I must've been anxious. I feel different. I feel like, all calm. yeah, it's just like, it, it yeah. takes you from like 10 to, <laughs> to I feel four, so. chilled out. I could take a little nap now. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, what led you to become a Reiki master? Um, you know, it was just a kind of a natural evolution. Um, I don't know how it, it came into my my sight of why why am I not? It was more of a why am I not a Reiki practitioner? Um, my whole life, I've <clears throat> been an empath. I've been very um, aware of energy um i've been very aware of my ability to affect energy um to read energy i can go into a place i've never been before and get a feeling for that energy um i remember when i was a little girl and uh, one of the first i used to love making desserts and one of the first um desserts I made was a pudding and I remember bringing it out to my parents and telling them I made this with love and so <laughs> and I do that to this day that when I cook and I remember when we when we used to do the raw food um, preparation I was always very intentional in, intentional about sending energy to the food um, and I remember people used to feel that, you know, that we like we would laugh and we would dance and we would sing while we were preparing this food. So we were literally sending that joy and that energy to what we were making. Yes. And um, so I don't know, just one day it just was like, oh, my God, you know, I've really been working with energy the majority of my life. Why am I not, you know, putting this into a, a healing modality? So that's what a beautiful story thank you for sharing. 
I always learn something new when I'm with you. As much as I <laughs> many years I've spent with you, I always learn something new. Okay, so uh, <laughs> where do you practice? Um, practice at, uh, well, pre-COVID was uh, mostly at the, the studio, the Science of Excellence in Eagle Rock. And um, now I'm doing uh, a lot of um, distance healing work. Okay. So people can contact me, you know, by phone, email. So they set up an appointment. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's talk about distance healing for a minute. Um, okay. Do do you have do you do it from a photo? Do you have to be online? Mm -hmm. Um. So when working with um, the visual clients, what I like to do is I have, and I ran out, I don't have any here with me right now, but I have like a little body template that I use. And so then just discuss with the, with the client um, what areas they need the most help with, you know, if they're feeling pain somewhere or if it's emotional, um, you know, just, so I have, so I have a visual to work with and, um, and sometimes what I do is I also will add, um, crystals to it to just amplify the healing energy just depends on the client, you know, and on what they need. Um, so that's, that's primarily it. So it'll be a face-to-face -face consultation. Um, and then we disconnect, I will do the work and, um, a lot of it is me going into like a, a deep meditation and working with the template. And when then, then when I'm finished, I let them know. And um, sometimes it's another face to face with the client or they can go off and do their, their life. So that's, that's the beauty of it too, that they don't have to um, stay with me for the full 30 or 60 minutes. You know, we can we can have our consultation and then they can go on and do their day. Oh, well that's... and then we just do it. I just do a check in with them afterwards. OK, um, yeah. I might be getting ahead of of, of it, but uh, cutting cords. Are we ready to cut cords? Mm -hmm. um, sure, we can do that. What I do the way I do that. Um, well, what I was going to show you was part of um because this is self-care Saturday. And um, so I wanted to give you guys a, a little um, demo on what I do, part of what I do in the morning and what I do at night and what that does. It's a, it's a balancing and a cleansing routine that I practice for myself. Um, and that also involves uh, cutting cords. Mm -hmm. And if anybody doesn't understand what uh, cords are, um, again, this is energy. And when we are um, with people, and it can be people that we love, it can be people that we don't love, it can be people that we don't even know. Um, sometimes we have an energetic attachment to them. And um, it can be empowering, it can be neutral, it can be um, draining. And so it's always a good idea before you go to bed at night to clear those cords. And also in the morning, just in case there's been any thing happening in your sleep, any, you know, dreams or someone's dreaming of you just to start your day fresh. Now I will say that there are cords um, that we want to maintain. So if there's people that we love, you, you know, your spouse, your children, your parents, whatever, you want to have those cords, but you can always reconnect the cord. So in my practice, I like to just cut all cords and then resend and allow the, the receiving of cords. So um, I'll just show you what I do in the morning and what I do at night. It's the same routine. And <laughs> the idea here too is... Um, to to create an electrical balance in the body and also um, to give thanks for uh, your senses 
and um and then the cleansing so it's balancing it's gratitude um and it's cleansing so this is a little it's a little um combination of eft which is tapping elect um uh, emotional freedom technique <clears throat> it's a, a combination of that and reiki so well, the first thing i do as i rub my hands together and um, should we do it with you what this you can do it with me sure okay so what this does is it sends the message to the brain you know we have um i think seventy thousand nerve endings in the palms of our hands so this is connecting left and right brain it is also um gratitude and thanks so you take a minute you rub take a minute inhale and exhale and just be in a state of gratitude okay and feel the energy in your in your hands okay because these are also going to be your, your little tools here so when you feel that energy you put them over your eyes and give thanks for your vision and thanks for your eyes you can breathe in and breathe out and you may or may not feel anything i usually hold them there roughly about 10 seconds and um for me usually i'll see a swirl of energy happen and i know i've i've connected okay and then the next will be your ears so you're sending energy to your ears and this is the sense of hearing. So be grateful for your hearing. And any messages you may receive, any guidance. We can also receive messages and guidance through our eyes as well. And then we move to the sense of smell. And gratitude, hopefully you can smell. Gratitude for that sense of smell. And then I put them over my mouth. I always put my right hand first because that is the, the hand that mostly sends energy. Put my left hand over it. Inhale and give gratitude for your voice, your communication, your um, sense of taste. Okay, and then when you make that connection, we move into the tapping. And this also, I forgot to mention, this is also um, your <clears throat> gratitude for your sense of touch. Okay, so that will cover all five senses. And then um, with your index finger, middle finger together, begin tapping the bone below your eye. And what this is going to do, the tapping phases are um, primarily about lymphatic flow, okay? So you're going to tap under here for about 10 seconds or 25 taps. And then I move down to the collarbone. And we want to tap there about 25 times, 10 seconds, whichever is easier. And then we move to the thymus area. And you're going to tap that at least 25 times or 10 seconds. And this is super important, especially that we're living in the time of COVID. Um, this is uh, a great regulator for the immune system. So you wanna be sure that your thymus is in super happy, healthy condition. And then the next spot is, ladies, you know where your bra line is. Men, just imagine <laughs> maybe like a hand and a half width below your armpit and tap there. So all of this is to get any stagnation um, in the lymph, get that flowing. <clears throat> and especially ladies, if you wear bras, we tend to have a little binding in that area and that's not particularly helpful for our lymph flow. So 
give that good attention. Sometimes I even, I'll tell you another little trick. Sometimes I grab my, um, my duo mag and I literally roll it all along this area. Just to make sure that's flowing. Um, okay. Now the next part of that, this is called, um, it's a dry brush and, um, and this is a, a definite Reiki aspect. So you're going to take your right hand over to your left shoulder. <laughs> I'm seeing myself. And you cross <laughs> it. You swipe it across your body. So you're going to inhale. And then exhale when you swipe it across. <sighs> okay. And that brings cleansing to your shoulders, your heart. Um, your stomach, your liver. Okay. And then you do the opposite side. Same thing. You inhale and then swipe across. Okay. So, and that's shoulder, heart, um, stomach, and then you're catching your um, spleen. Okay. And then the last portion of the dry brush is you're going to swipe left right to left <laughs> and put your arm. I'm going to kind of, you put your arm in this kind of position <clears throat> and then you swipe and do it again. Inhale, exhale and swipe. Okay. Now here's the part for the cords. Um, and I say a little something when I do this, um, I stand up. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see me entirely. Kind of stand up. I'm yep. wearing my nice big comfy say la vie dress, by the way. Oh, nice. Um, so you stand up, and what I always say is, um, I now release all cords, hooks, and drains. Okay, and I, I'm scooping. So scooping from the top, and then from the bottom of my feet, and then I bring them together like this. Okay, and then literally grab. So you're holding a bunch of cords, hook strings, and you cut three times. Okay, and then I usually throw them to the ocean, which would be to the west. Salt water burns <laughs> and purifies. Okay, and then I swipe my hands three times. Those are released. Okay. Wow. Now, I like that. What? I really like, like that? that. Yeah. So yeah. the last portion of that, because <clears throat> again, like I mentioned earlier, you want to, you, there are people that you do want to stay connected to. So then I will stand, put my hands out and I will say, I accept and receive cords of God's love light too. And then I will name the people that I am sending them to and who I'm okay with receiving them from. Wow. And then that's it. Wow. I So I do that in the morning I, and then at night. I really <laughs> love that. So um, we're going to do a, you're going to do a Reiki at our Halloween event that's coming up at the studio on the 31st. Did you decide what you're going to do? I mean, I hope you do a little bit of this over there. This um, Really I powerful. Haven't, I haven't decided precisely yet, so <clears throat> more to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. just just to plug in for that, we're uh, on Halloween from two to four. We're gonna have uh, in the patio in the parking lot area. Uh, we're going to have um, sound bath. We're gonna have the shaman doing some clearing. We're gonna have cicada. Um, uh, blue, blue ivy, blue cherry, <laughs> blue ivy, blue cherry doing tarot. <laughs> You're going to be doing Reiki and I'm going to be doing um, aura readings with my Healy. So uh, right. we need to do more of this or maybe at the full moon bath. This is, this would be powerful too. Um, wow. Okay. Let me look. I'm just so blown away with that. That's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, just so I'm clear, because I'm sometimes getting all confused, the the AM PM balance is is that different? Is this the same? There, no, that's that's what I just did. 
So, okay, so I do that in the morning when I get up in the morning and then before bed. So that little thing here, that's called the AMPM balance. And then the cutting cords is that. That's all part of it. Right. Oh, okay. So it's a whole package. Yep. <laughs> 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 the whole package. Yes. Wow. Wow. So when you're doing a Reiki, you do this on people or you teach them that or how does that work? No, this this is um, mostly for the, me as a practitioner, just so that I, you know, you can't help people when your cup is empty. So this is one of the things I do to to make sure that I'm I'm OK, you know, that I'm balanced. Yes. Wow. And it's it's a way of when you're in that state of gratitude, it's a way of staying connected to that um, spiritual energy, the universal energy. It's always there, but we need to um, in order to feel it, sometimes we have to recognize it. And, we, and by being in a state of gratitude and acknowledging it just makes it that much easier for it to flow through us. Wow. So. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not even exaggerating and blown away. <laughs> One of the best sessions I've ever had. I guess I needed it. Uh, so, okay, let me look at my little notes here. Uh, I think we covered everything. Was there anything else that you wanted to add about anything? Um, no, I was just going to do, um, once we're completely ready to, to wrap up, I was going to share with you, um, it's called the, the five precepts. So it can be kind of like our little closing, um, mantra or reminder. Okay. Well, let me, let me ask if anybody is there and once has a question for Cicada, okay. if you do please, um, and Troy is sharing our video. He's so sweet. Uh, if you anybody has a question for Cicada about Reiki or distance healing or anything, this is the time to step it up. Uh, and uh, she will answer the question and or do a little session on you. Uh, I don't see anybody. We'll get a few more minutes. And um, I guess. Okay. So uh, I, let me see if I have your info on the top here. I think I do. I think I put your phone number. She could, you can get a, get her at the science of excellence website to book in. Uh, what is your email? Tell us your email. It's um, long. Is it not on there? It's cicada bio essentials. So the word cicada, C I C A D A B I O. E S S C E N T I A L S, which is also my Instagram handle, um, at gmail.com. Oh, I don't know if I put it. Yeah, I did. I put it in the front. Okay. So, uh, so you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter, and w this live stream will be, I'll take it to YouTube and then we could repost it to the science page. Um, <laughs> So if anybody wants to get a hold of you, I, I will put all the info on the top of the video okay. so people can have that as well as look in here because I think I did put it in. Uh, okay. So I guess nobody has any questions. So let's do the closing prayer. Okay. So, um, so this was um, a reminder from uh, Mikau Usui and um, something to think about every day they're called the five precepts and it's meant to keep us in the present moment because the past is over the future hasn't happened yet and the only thing we have control over is right now so it goes this way for today only do not anger for today only do not worry for today only be humble for today only be honest in your work and for today only be compassionate to yourself and others. Mm. That's beautiful. I love that. Oh my God. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you. Cicada. Namaste. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll talk to you in a few seconds. I'm going to close okay. off uh, blessings and love to everybody that watched. If you have any questions about anything, any of these live streams, please make a comment and please feel free to share because we're about sharing information. Blessing. Truth is my name. Oops. Okay.
lost my I lost my thing. 